video I'm going to be showing you how to make a, a memory book using the Tonic Memory Book 2 dies. Now I have done previous videos on this and I've done one from start to finish but I thought we might do an, a bit of a different one today. Now you have to excuse this is just a sample. Um, the books that I've actually made for um, to show you I've um, I've, well I've actually made them for um, my DT project so I can't actually show that yet but I can show my sample that I've sort of made so that because what I do is if I have an idea I um, try and make the sample up as best I can and then you can then um, change it or if something doesn't work then you can maybe think of another way of how to do it and sometimes you might think of something and think oh that's a brilliant idea then when you come to make it you just can't so that's what I do with my samples so this is a, a sample one so um, it is a little bit battered so please excuse it but we're going to do instead of doing our memory book because traditionally they're supposed to be like that and then you have the spine here but I thought let's try a different one let's try instead of having a portrait let's have a landscape one and see how that goes now the ones that I've actually made have come out brilliantly I will say I'm really really pleased with the ones that I've done so far so I thought it would be nice to show you how I do it so you will need uh, your tonic member book two dies if you haven't got these you can follow along but instead of cutting out your dies you could um, just cut them out on your trimmer okay that that's the easiest way you can do it that way it is possible to be done when we come to the spine um, I have a video that I've got which I will put a link up there and um, shows you how to make the spine up if you haven't got the spine die if you can only afford one thing out of the two I would suggest getting the spine die because that then you can make up the, your pages without the dies and, and vice versa it really is entirely up to you but I would say the spine would make life a lot easier there's a lot less um, sort of measuring and scoring and things like that it's uh, all sort of done for you so we're going to be doing that now I'm also going to be using um, the new legacy die booklet that's coming out um, you have to excuse mine as you can see it is uh, a bit uh, used already uh, and I will have to say I have been given this from tonic as part of my DT package and um, so just to let you know so with this you can make up a little booklet again I haven't got one to show you but um, hopefully I will have one soon and we'll be able to sh I'll show you how we do that so we'll be making this up this is the base and then what happens here is these ones at the top they're the flaps this is the base and then these are the flaps that flap up now you can add to this, you can add, cut another one out and add it and make it longer. Um, really, or you can make it wider. It really is a, a phenomenal die kit, I will say. And then these are all the dies and the verso things that go inside it. I so say you can cut different elements out. You've got um, words in with this one um, as well. But as we go through, I'll show you how we're going to make that so that may be in a separate video okay because that that is sort of a project on its own and then we've got the new embossing folder uh, as Jody Johnson had said this was supposed to come out with the memory book ties when um, these launched uh, but it was held up so it didn't get launched at the same time so they're bringing them out now so as you can see we've got the uh, this would be your front or back cover it uh, works extremely well with the memory books now I found here this fits the biggest uh, page 
of your memory book so this is the biggest page that you can make it fits that now I'm not going to use obviously the biggest one because I found if you use trying to do the biggest one doing it a landscape as you can see here it's rounded with the inverted curve there but it hasn't on this side so it would look a bit, little bit odd um, to do that in landscape how I personally thought you might not need might not like what might not think so you might do it this way so it's just my opinion I didn't want uh, I, I like things to be symmetrical so I didn't want them to be different but it does work then on the next size down so the next size down is one that I've done here and that fits as you can see it um, fits beautifully and then you've got then the inverted curve on all of the corners like so so this is the one we're going to be using so we're going to be using the second biggest die in your memory book 2 kit okay so if I put these ones away and then we'll come on to the embossing folder a bit later on in the video but then that is the the embossing folder and what I did was I kind of gauged it and sort of you know so eyeballed it to see how um, you know so that it would be more even on each corner uh, so it can be done you can chop it down okay I wouldn't have thought you'd want to go more any more smaller than maybe the next size down from this otherwise you're going to lose the detail but this here fits perfectly with the um, there was a baroque frame in with there was there one of the accessories with the memory book and that there f is um, the perfect fit for that um, that die and then these are your spine now I watched Jodie last night uh, on her wine time and um, again you get different ideas I hadn't thought of it but you can use this these are for your spine to give your spine a decorative finish she used them this way which is probably the, the, the way that they're supposed to be used but I used them this way I quite liked this here because that fits perfectly on the spine okay so that's I used it lengthways so portrait more than landscape okay so it's really it's entirely up to you it's how you see um, your your materials and your your things working for you which is there's no ever right or wrong way so let me get tidied up and then we'll start die cutting and um, we'll go from there I'm going to be using this graphic 45 paper which is the gilded lily uh, I've had it for a little while now I think it's time to cut into I've got the 12 by 12 and also the 8 by 8 so I'm going to be using the two um, of those different ones these are just beautiful for little tags and embellishments so I shall be using that as well as you can see I've used some already uh, there are some little butterflies that I've cut out so we'll be using those and that um, my craft card comes from uh, Anna Marie Designs for me personally it is one of the, the best craft papers out there it just seems to fold nice uh, it sits nice it's got a lovely coating on it um, which is um, it's just lovely and uh, it's got two different sides so you could have the lighter side as you can see this is the the lighter side this is more the beigey side and then this color here is more of the darker um, sort of the glossier side I prefer to use have the glossy side showing but again personal preference to you I'm going to cut out first of all I need to get my spine don't I aha there it is I'm actually going away at the weekend so um, on like a crafty retreat uh, with some lovely people 
and uh, so we're doing uh, we're taking loads of craft products to use and stuff so I packed this to go away so you need to, I'll cut your spine out first and if we then do the spine we'll get that together and then we'll cut out the pages so bear with me Oops. now cutting if you have got um, the tangerine just I'm not sure because I haven't got tangerine but um, it should cut these you know just use your what it says for your sandwich uh, size now for the Gemini what I found was if I had the embossing folder and then the magnetic shimmin mine's a bit filthy um, it would warp the paper so the paper went uh, it, it just warped it so that it was useless so how I found was just to use the mag the metal shim and you would have to tape it down so that it doesn't move and then that seemed to cut a it cut it perfectly so just check your sandwich first if you're new to this and you haven't used these dies before what I suggest you do is use some very cheap card that you've got we've all got that uh, stash of card that we've bought and it's we've maybe not thought it was so brilliant but you haven't thrown it away so I would use that first and make up a sample book first and then you can learn them by your mistakes doing it that way and then it's not such a um, a hefty you know you don't feel so bad if you've then you, you know it doesn't turn out the way you want it so that, that's my suggestion right what we need to do now I've got my spine we need to cut out our spine twice so we need to cut two of these now I wouldn't um, advise um, cutting two together especially on the spine because we need those embossing lines to be quite strong so I would um, cut one out at a time now I'm just going to cut my craft card in half now if you haven't got 12 by 12 you can use A4 okay A4 does work with this um, album I just like the um, because I've sort of bought my bought my craft card I've um, I've got um, 12 by 12 because I've bought, bought, bought it and also I make uh, square albums um, as well so uh, for the square albums I need that, that longer length uh, in the paper so um, that's why I've got the 12 by 12 but um, A4 will work with the memory book 2 dies right so I'm going to fast forward this little bit uh, and remember we're cutting two of the spines okay depending on what size of album you want to make depends on how many of these you've cut out now you this makes a six page album so you've got 12 sides that you can decorate you can make a four sided a four paged album you could just use the one and make a three paged album if you want to so how are we going how i then put these together now i'm not going to i'm actually going to stick these together first you may need to cut one of your pages just to give you a guide um, so I'll just quickly do that now. Right, so now we're going to put these together. So you'll need your double sided tape. Now I'm using uh, a quarter inch tape and this is red line tape 
Uh, this one I buy in, it's a 50 metre roll. It is a little bit more expensive, but um, you get 50 metres. I find in the, the ones that you get um, from those shops that are cheaper, um, you don't get as met, you don't get as much meterage on them. Um, you might get 20 rolls, but you might only have two meters on each, or you might only have a meter of, of them on on each roll. And then I've also found with the cheaper ones is they tend to come off of the roll easier. Um, so you could have a roll like this, but they might not have. Whereas this has got the plastic ring and, and this one's got a, a, a cardboard ring um, they're cheaper for a reason because they they don't actually stick onto your roll when you pull the roll off they could then um, you, you know you, you get loads and loads of it all all um, come off and it, uh, it's not nice um, so that's why I tend to go with the 50 meter roll of uh, red line because uh, it stays on the roll no matter what but each to their own um, I'm not saying this is uh, this is how what I have found so um, you know somebody else might have found um, that it doesn't do that so that that's all fair and well that's all good it's just my personal experience okay so I'm going to just stick that on there like that Oops. Right, that um, where that um, crease there is not going to make any difference. Okay, so just get my pokey tool if I haven't packed it. Um, oh, I can get it off. There we go. Okay, and then just try and stick. Don't, just try and leave a tiny gap between the embossed line and where you then stick your next piece because we want that to be a nice fold we don't want it to sort of fight with the fold underneath okay so I don't know if you can see that I've just leave a tiny tiny gap not a lot just a, just a, a little gap between the embossed line and the edge of this page here okay now we've got them stuck down we can now go um, we can now start thinking about cutting them down so this is where this comes in handy goes this way right I was thinking that that was not right now I'm going to mark these in a pencil so that you can see it I'm going to bring you down bit more just so that you can see what I'm doing okay, that down. Right, okay. right, right. so what I'll do is we need now to measure so we need to gauge really how big our spine is going to be now this is going to be the edge where our spine is connects to here and so we don't need this part here we don't need that at all and we don't need this at the bottom so we're going to use our we've got little embossed notches on our spine so I'm going to use the top one of those okay so I'm just going to mark it to show you so that's one embossed little notch there we go if you can see there so that's one little embossed notch and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place the edge of my paper up to that notch and then I'm going to mark I'm just then going to mark the edge of this page here like so okay and then I'm going to cut this side of that mark okay like that so we bring it if I bring you down so that you can see quite closely what I've done. And that's out. There we go. So you can see the embossed lines here. 
these are the embossed lines and then the, can you see these little tiny notches here there's one there there's one there and then there's one there okay now these notches are if you were making your traditional landscape album these notches denote um, how big your page is okay so where your spine would be so if we were making a landscape one this way we would then cut at notch two and then cut down here at notch two as well chop this off and then all of this is waste okay but as we've, we're making the landscape one, it hasn't got a notch for that. So we're just going to use one of the notches and then just make one of them ourselves. So, okay, so that's that one. And then there's the second one there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're now going to cut um, those notches off. Okay, so that we can get rid of our excess. So let me just bring my trimmer in. Now I'm hoping I don't need to change my blade. So there's the one notch. Can you see? Um, let me bring you down. Oh, can you see there? There's one notch. So we're just going to cut on that notch okay. like so that cuts that off and then we're going to turn it round and do the same on the other side and the notch is there okay you can just about see it just there okay so I'm going to place my paper on there and then cut and I'm going to have to change my blade Okay, so then that then is our spine, near enough done. So you can see I've got a perfect fit now for my page. Okay, so we're going to be putting uh, our tape on both sides of our spine. Now, the smaller size, I think this is not one eighth. Um, measure this one is a just under a quarter of an inch I think this is just over yeah this one is uh, just over a quarter okay so you can see there's the two difference so I I'll use the score tape first so that you can see now yeah so you need to work on your right side so the side that you want showing up that um, will you put your pages on? You want that showing, you want that um, upwards, and then you're going to use your thinner tape. It, it, you know, you can get other ones apart from the score tape. Um, you know, you can get. I think you can get a smaller red line tape. I like to use this because it's different. Um, it's not different. Sorry, it is strong. And also because of the different colours, it's really good on camera so that you can see, um, you know, what, what I'm actually doing. So this is going to go on the right side. Now what we're going to do, we're going to miss one and then we've got two smaller ones. So if I show you, we've got a larger line and then two small embossed lines next to it. Now these two small embossed lines, they're going to be the hinge okay then what's going to stick up so it's those two that we want the lighter the white tape on so if we put that on now if you try and get it so that your tape is quite near to the embossed line at the top can you see how I've got mine there so that's the the top of the line that's what we're going to fold in half now we want it more upwards than we do down so that when we put our tape our pages on we haven't got a line of tape showing at the bottom so you're going to put two next to each other miss one then you're going to do the same and miss one 
and we're going to do the same and so you've got two together and then you miss one two together and then you miss one that so these ones here they are going to be our they're going to be our hinge so now we need to turn it over so that we're working on the back side now this one we need to put tape on all of them okay now you can use the big tape or if you would prefer which might be a better idea if we use the school tape um, on the hinges and then the red line tape um, on the parts that we're going to show. So if I, I can't very, I can't very well see this. Let's see if I can turn. No. Nope. See if I can turn this light on. Might give me a better. Just about, I can just see. What I think I may have to do is work. So you might have to excuse me just a minute in case you can't see just so that I because the, the the boss lines are so faint that it's hard to see on this side to put them. So if I just do those right and then of the red line this down just to make sure that it's it's fairly well stuck so just trying to get all the air bubbles out so that it is nice and firmly stuck like so now I'll do the other to the other side okay right now comes this bit now this is the back, okay, this is and this is the front. So what I what I tend to do is I'll fold one part over. So fold one end and give it a good burnish, like so. Okay. Then fold now you need to then because this next one needs to fold up. So this needs to be your mountain fold. Okay. And then the, the, the one that's here needs to be the valley. So that needs to go into the valley. Like so. Okay. So you should end up with something that looks like, oops, like that. Okay. Can you see if I do it that way? You can see there. Okay, now this uh, double-sided tape we need to take off, but just take off the white tape. Don't take off the red tape yet. So I need my trusty pick, and then you can stick them down. Okay, and then that's what it's going to look like from the back okay then you need to do the same with the others okay just be careful as you're folding and then fold that one and then fold that one okay and that goes up score And then 
stick that next one down. Okay. Right, I will fast forward this and um, I'll see you on the other side. them sort of all folded what I now tend to do is I just cut off um, a corner so uh, a diagonal I just cut off a corner of the the hinge that just helps the pages sit really snug and neatly onto the, the onto your spine onto your hinge fastenings you don't have to do this as I say I just like it because it just gives that that smooth finishing touch okay and then you haven't got that bulk then on the corner of your page okay the only thing is is they uh, you'll find them for days because they ping off everywhere they um, they get stuck to everything Right, once we've done our spine, we now need to make the cover that just goes that our spine is going to sit on. Because this is quite um, bendy, we we need to actually ap apply it to a piece of card to make it a bit more stronger. So we need a piece of card that measures five and a half. Okay. So five and a half, and I said one and sorry four and one eighth, but I would say let's make it one and a quarter. Sorry, make it four and a quarter. Okay, because what I want to happen is I want to have a little bit of a lip that covers the edge of our spine. Okay, so it's not much. It's just well, not even an eighth of an inch. But it's just to cover this ragged edge at the top, it's just to make it for a neater finish. Okay. So once we've cut um, our um, spine board, I'm going to call it, we need to, to measure, we need to score at one and a quarter by four and a quarter. Okay. Like so. And then fold over, fold over. Okay, and then that should give us a nice housing to house our spine in. Okay, like so. Can we see? There we go. And then we're going to stick that down. Now, what's then going to happen when we put our card, when we put our pages on, that's then going to give us a nice strong bond to put our page on but we're going to sandwich this board in between the two pages that we cut okay like so so that's going to look nice so now what we can do is we need to then take off the red line tape also going to do just to, for, to add a bit more stability and a bit more stick is I'm going to just put on a little bit of wet glue not on all of it because I want an instant sort of grab now but as per usual my 
my glue is always bunged up. Okay. Hopefully, I've got that. Right, so I'm just going to put it on the pet the inside ones like so okay just leave the outside because we want that initial grab but then we want it to be stuck forever okay push that to close because they're coming out and then that then will also give us a little bit of a wiggle room as well There we go, and then give it a good burnish down so that it's nice and stuck. Oops. Okay, and then that then is our spine board, and that's our spine is all nice and set on there, ready then for us to put our pages on. Now the pages are going to go, we're going to have one that goes to, at the back and then one goes at front. But what we're going to do is we're going to, we're not going to put the pages on just yet, okay. So I'm going to leave it there and um, we'll use this as one video. So this is the video one of, I don't know how many videos this series is going to be. Um, I'm hoping it's not going to be long, as long as the others, but uh, we are crafting along together. So I like to do things in as much real time as possible so that you can gauge how long it's going to take you as well. You know, obviously things like your heat gun and the die cutting machine, um, I'll speed those up because uh, it, it, it's boring then. So give me a thumbs up if uh, you like this video and uh, come and follow me on social media I'm on Facebook Instagram I have Pinterest as well uh, either search for Tamara Morton or Posh Cat Crafts and I will come up on one of those um, I am Tamara Morton on Facebook but Posh Cat Crafts also has a page on Facebook so you'll find either or uh, or both if you like um, I'd love it if you become a subscriber to my channel then you can be kept up to date on all my videos that I do in the future. If there's anything that you'd like to see me do, then please leave me a comment down below or message me. Uh, I'm quite quick to get to my messages, so um, you know, always glad to um, hear what you would like to do next. Um, this video is for somebody that messaged me the other day on Facebook. She wanted to know um, how we did the legacy uh, booklet the legacy dies um, so this video is for her um, so um, you know if there's anything that you'd like me to do um, if I've got the time to do it then of course I'll do it if uh, I haven't got time to do the video I will try and talk you through it I'll do it that way um, you know or if I don't know somebody will know and uh, you know we can help in any way we can Anyway, with that said, uh, as again, gives me a, a thumbs up and a like, and uh, subscribe. Love to have new subscribers to my channel, and um, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.